Welcome to New York Nonprofit Media. My name is Aimee St. Pierre. I'm the editor at large here, and I am in the CEO corner with Fatima Shama. And she is the CEO of Fresh Air Fund, which serves approximately 9,000 low income children from New York City annually. Is that? That's correct. About right, and providing them opportunities to get out of the city and to enjoy some fresh air with uh, rural families up along the uh, Northeast Coast and in Southern Canada. Um, I just would thank you, first of all, for, for being with us. Delighted. Much appreciated. Delighted to be here. I have to just, you've been CEO now since July of 2015, mm -hmm. um, so not a full year yet, um, but I, I understand from your resume that you served in the past as VP with Maimonides Medical Center, mm -hmm. and that you were also the commissioner of the New York City Mayor's Office of Immigrant Affairs, and now you've moved on to this position. Can you just tell us a little bit about your career path and yeah. some of the skills that have helped you move in and out from these different sectors? Yeah, yeah. So I think I described myself. First, thank you. Sure. Thanks for having me. Um, so I think I describe myself as um, a nonprofit professional mm -hmm. who um, has committed to serving children and families in our city okay. and the breadth and beauty of the, the families in our city. Mm -hmm. um, and um, as a born and raised New Yorker, um, I have had the pleasure of being the beneficiary of so mm -hmm. many different programs mm -hmm. um, and opportunities, and now I get to do that for a living, and that's pretty great. So um, my experience has been everything from working in the nonprofit, mm -hmm. sort of in the smaller nonprofits on mm -hmm. the front line in community-based spaces, mm -hmm. to then working in government, both from a policy arena and then mm -hmm. leading the Mayor's Office of Immigrant Affairs, mm -hmm. to really seeing the functionality of, non uh, of government mm -hmm. and the intersection mm -hmm. of, quite mm -hmm. honestly, working with community-based partners right. who serve communities. Um, and then, uh, so I have a very strong policy background, mm -hmm. a very strong sort of understanding on um, what informs the potential of solutions mm -hmm. that we have. Mm -hmm. um, and then having experienced a large nonprofit that is a hospital that mm -hmm. is very rooted in community. Maimonides does an exceptional job serving community, mm -hmm. really seeing the ability of what it means to actually be in a big place mm -hmm. to serve a community. Mm -hmm. um, I love the ability to serve citywide, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and at the Fresh Air Fund, we serve children from all over New York. Mm -hmm. and. Um, my commitment mm -hmm. around the breadth and beauty of this city means serving the diversity of this city, where of the 8.5 million people living in New York, mm -hmm. nearly 2 million are children, mm -hmm. and a third of whom are living in poverty, mm -hmm. where 36% are Latinos, mm -hmm. where 25% are African American, mm -hmm. where 11% and growing are Asian, mm -hmm. um, where the achievement gap has a dialogue that mm -hmm. needs to be evident, mm -hmm. where health public health needs are um, important. And so all of these experiences I have had help mm -hmm. inform what I think I do and how Definitely. I do it and why I do it, um, which is why being at the Fresh Air Fund is a really lovely opportunity because it is an intersection mm -hmm. through the vehicle of the outdoors. Right, makes sense. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what some of your priorities are moving forward for the organization? Are there some partnerships or yeah, some? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, um, so the Fresh Air Fund will turn 140 this year. Right. It's been around since 1877. 1877. Started through the lens of providing services to children um, through a public health agenda. Mm -hmm. um, I call it a public health agenda. One would say it was a tuberculosis crisis mm -hmm. and a mm -hmm. very um, intrepid minister who um, moved from serving on mm -hmm. the Lower East Side into Pennsylvania and thought, well, why don't we take children out so mm -hmm. they can get some fresh air? Mm -hmm. That evolved into what is today the Fresh Air Fund, where right. we work with children in our city um, and provide them an opportunity to visit either with families where this cultural exchange program is still alive 140 mm -hmm. years later, mm -hmm. pretty exceptional, mm -hmm. um, and where we also own um, close to 2,000 acres of land in the Hudson Valley in Fishkill, New York, where we operate five separate camps mm -hmm. serving boys and girls between the ages of 9 and 15. Mm -hmm an all-girls camp, two all-boys camps, mm -hmm. two co-ed camps, one with a real focus on a career awareness, college readiness agenda. What is clear to me in my role now, having come from an interesting background, mm -hmm. is the reality that the outdoors is in fact an opportunity to start a relationship with a child and their family. Mm -hmm. Where in some of our communities, the public health needs, whether they're obesity or asthma, mm -hmm. whether they're gang violence, or gun violence, mm -hmm. um, whether it's inequity of resources in schools, mm -hmm. 
we get to have an opportunity to start a relationship with a child by bringing them into an environment where it is about them being a child, mm -hmm. where it is layered with enrichment, where it is layered with opportunity, where it's layered with learning, whether it's about the sky and the stars or the lakes they swim in or composting or the arts. Um, where so many middle-income children have these things by default, where in our city, that just isn't the narrative, right? The safety of what happens in a community prevents a child from being able to go outside sometimes. The busyness of a parent's schedule may not allow for a parent to find these resources. There's just a lot that we get to provide. And as I move into this role, my function and focus is really on how do we broaden that dialogue? How do we think more creatively about our partners that are on the front line mm -hmm. to help be that summer experience for mm -hmm. children? Mm -hmm. Um, how do we then take what happens in a summer and enhance it through a year-round experience? Mm -hmm. How do we really think about what is this moment in time and how does it present itself as introducing a child to something they may not know? You know, that, that brings to mind with what would the importance now of uh, measuring impact and uh, return on investment. How do you measure the value of getting fresh air? How have you quantified that? What, what do you monitor so, to make sure that so we're... So that's a great question and mm -hmm. one that I think we're um, both wrestling with but excited about okay. because I think it can be everything from that new experience mm -hmm. that... Um, Let's, let's separate the programs because I think the mm -hmm. camping experience allows us to look at impact very mm -hmm. um, um, uniquely in that. Mm -hmm. We have many children who come back summer after summer after summer. Mm -hmm. And so measuring impact mm -hmm. over time is going to be a much easier experience mm -hmm. because they're going to swim in lakes and we're going to measure, you know, they're going to they're going to test the water of the lake and so they're mm -hmm. going to learn the environmental realities of what's in this water, what it means, right? They're going to learn how to swim and we're going to measure, you know, where they were when they arrived and when they leave. There are poetry slams, so their writing is engaged. There's reading nights, so there's reading engagement. Um, there's a nutrition um, aspect where they go f and they experience farm to table. Every child who goes through our camping program goes through the compost learning. So mm -hmm. every child who leaves a Fresh Air Fun Camp can explain to you everything about composting. It is extraordinary, <laughs> to be honest, mm -hmm. given that we have community gardens all across the city. So right. for me, how do we connect those dots, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But on the Friendly Town experience, how do we measure impact? Mm -hmm. It is this experience where I think to a child gets to visit with a family and learn and share so much about their own life. Mm -hmm. But what is it in that that we can measure? And that's the part that I think is going to be either more complicated mm -hmm. or more exciting. Interesting. In particular, because we have a nation that's engaged in an interesting dialogue about differences, mm -hmm. where the Fresh Air Fund has been engaged in celebrating differences and introducing them mm -hmm. for its entire history. Tell me, has it become easier or more difficult to have host families sign up? What have you found has been the trend? Well, w at one point, the organization had over 10,000 children visiting families mm -hmm. up and down the East Coast. Mm -hmm. That number is much smaller today. Mm -hmm. And we think the reasons are vast, mm -hmm. whether it's two parent households that are now um, both employed and summer schedules are two weeks of summer vacation. Mm -hmm. um, it could be that other, res other programs are pulling mm -hmm. closer, ge geographically closer to home. Mm -hmm. So for those families that may have hosted in Massachusetts, they can pick from Boston or they mm -hmm. can, you know, mm -hmm. down in Maryland, they may be picking from Baltimore or Philly or all of those kinds of things mm -hmm. where some of these challenges are not unique to New York. Mm -hmm. But we still have a very strong cohort and core of people and each of whom see the value of the experience uniquely different. For our city families, I have heard mm -hmm. um, when I'm meeting with a New York City mother who says, and I say, mm -hmm. why, are you do you know, why did you enroll in this? And they'll say, I don't know if my child will ever get to see what Lancaster PA looks like. Mm -hmm. And this is a chance where they get to have that experience mm -hmm. in a sort of exchange experience. I mean, I, mm -hmm. I think we all think of whether it's study abroad or this exchange experience. Mm -hmm. I don't want to draw that analogy too deeply, mm -hmm. but there is that experience where um, what I have learned from the children mm -hmm. from our program, mm -hmm. from our own children who get to participate, the connection mm -hmm. My best description is that it's family, men it's mentoring family style, where a child gets to learn from a child their age, from a parent, from both parents, from neighbors, mm -hmm. where 
that relationship, that ability to be so comfortable in making new relationships mm -hmm. is in its own right something I'd love to measure from an impact perspective, right? Um, and, and what is your stewardship process like with all of these families? I mean, keeping up with them and making sure they stay engaged, that's going to be With our New York involved. City children. Well, with uh, your well, primarily with the families that, that are host. hosting, yeah. This, th so we have, we connect with them, but it's in their communities that they're so connected okay. to, we have a core of volunteers who mm -hmm. are heroes, mm -hmm. in my opinion, mm -hmm. who don't get paid but work almost nine months a year mm -hmm. to prepare to welcome New York City Fresh Air Fund children. And they engage in this robust agenda of just being able to help us. So we are sending out press, we are sending out messages, we're sending reminders, we are thanking them. But they're actually connecting to, to, the, to the New York City children, mm -hmm. several of whom, as we know, go and spend Christmas break, mm -hmm. some of whom yeah. now President's Week is coming up, mm -hmm. several might go and spend a day or two with their host families. Mm -hmm. um, and so there is this very interesting relationship that gets developed. Mm -hmm. um, so part of it is us, but part of it, quite honestly, is that exchange, right? right. Is yeah. that reality that people connect, and those connections are what keep people alive, right? And Thanks. keep those things alive, right? right. So. Thank you so much. You know, just, just uh, actually in closing, can you just share with us a little bit about your leadership style and how um, even your own cultural background and how you expect that that will influence uh, the organization moving forward? So I was raised in a family where my parents came from two different places and um, were both of different faiths. And so I say my home was a flavorful, delicious <laughs> kind of celebration of differences. And I think that has informed a lot of who I am and what I love to do and hope to be when I grow up. But with that, I have been a part of learning around the, the importance of celebrating different voices at a table, mm -hmm. right? And so I'm an organizer by training as a sort of first job out of college. Mm -hmm. I've had the pleasure, pleasure of running coalitions and being a coalition builder. And so to me, my leadership style is inclusive. Right? It is about how many voices are at the table to help figure out the solutions, really engaging in those conversations, never being afraid of having them, and figuring out where are there opportunities to take those solutions and move them forward. And Wonderful. so Wonderful. I, I'm excited at the Fresh Air Fund. We get to do that and really serve the breath and beauty of the city once again. So, Thank you so much. I'm I appreciate you. your time. Thank you. Again, this is A. Mason Pierre in the CEO Corner with Fatima Shema.